Welcome to the final video in Health Diagnostics series of short animations on encouraging behaviour change. In the previous videos, we've looked at recognising readiness to change, as well as exploring some of the techniques that can help build motivation towards change. In this video, we'll be addressing how practitioners might go about working with their clients to set goals and create a plan for change. The material here is drawn from a variety of sources, including the work of Brett Nichols, John Whitmore and Mind in Camden. As we explored in the last video, motivation is often led by a difference between where someone sees their current self in relation to a potential future self. Health Options software particularly lends itself to this process of developing discrepancy. In the context of a cardiovascular health check, it can be harnessed to demonstrate precisely how things could be different. By using the what if you change scenario, the tangible effects of behaviour change can be demonstrated. In doing so, practitioners are able to give real substance to a client's idea of their future self. It's around this set of potential circumstances that the practitioner can work with a client to create an effective plan for moving forward. In order for this planning stage to be reached, however, it's important for the practitioner to recognise when, and indeed if, a client is ready. Indications that the client may be ready and willing to set some goals might include things like them expressing less resistance, asking fewer questions about the problem, demonstrating resolve, asking more questions about change, or envisioning where they could be. Being able to recognise this motivation and level of readiness is a key skill for a practitioner. In terms of the model discussed in depth in video 1, this skill equates to the practitioner attuning to the client's movement from contemplating a change through to them preparing and taking action. So what kinds of questions might be appropriate for a practitioner to ask when they sense a client is ready to change? In short, questions that encourage the client to begin thinking in a more focused way about a change plan. Potential questions may, for example, include what is it that you'd like to achieve? What would that look like for you? Or, what would be the best thing about making a change? Or, if you could advise yourself, what would you work on? Or, what do you think you'll do? All of these open questions are designed to help a client establish for themselves an end point, as well as to help them take ownership of the goals being set. Generally, the more meaningful the goal is to the person, the more likely they'll be to commit to it. In what's known as the GROW model, establishing some goals is the first step in a four-stage process. R, the second stage in the GROW model, stands for reality. This refers to working out what the current reality may be for the client, as well as to assessing how realistic their chosen goals are. Quite often, questions asked at this point in the process will be specific and begin with words such as what, when, where, who, and how much. For example, what have you done so far, and what were the effects of this? Or, when have you achieved this before, or been close? Or, what was different about the times you achieved your goals, or were close to doing so, by comparison to the times you were far off? or what might have to change. A key intention behind asking these kinds of questions is to identify any potential obstacles that might be standing in the way of change. Effectively clarifying these obstacles is something that can be used to begin exploring some options with the client. Establishing options particularly ones which acknowledge previous successes and may help the client negotiate any perceived obstacles, represents the next stage in the GROW model. It can be helpful to use this stage to generate a number of ideas without necessarily evaluating them too much. In line with the ideas explored in the previous video, 
the practitioner shouldn't here be providing the options, but rather be encouraging the client to elicit their own thoughts and feelings. Possible questions might include, what do you think you could do? And what else? Is there anything else? Who could help you with this? What would you advise yourself? And what might happen if you did that? An obstacle that's regularly cited by clients, and which may therefore shape the nature of the options discussed, is the fact that people often feel time constraints to be a barrier to lifestyle change. If the conversation is revolving around exercise, for example, and the client feels that their busy schedule is preventing them from doing more, the practitioner may find it worthwhile to ask the client to describe their typical day. This can provide opportunities to think about periods in which the client might be able to integrate exercise into their routine, say for example whilst travelling. Establishing a way forward is the fourth and final step in the GROW model. This stage is generally concerned with converting options into action steps, checking the commitment of the client and summarising the plan discussed. Having gathered a range of options, a practitioner might then ask, which of these options makes most sense to you? Or, which do you feel ready to act on? Or perhaps, how will you know when you've achieved this? What will that look like? Or, how are you going to measure your progress? Or, do you sense any possible obstacles that might be involved? And finally, what are the costs of you not doing this? In the previous video, we discussed at some length the use of the Importance Confidence Scale. Practitioners may find this a useful tool to revisit at this point of the consultation in order to explore whether the importance and confidence a client feels towards changing their behaviour has been strengthened as a result of the conversation that's been had. If you find that the client has a confidence level that doesn't seem encouraging, less than 8 for example, it may be an indication that the stated goal isn't realistic enough and might require breaking down into more manageable steps. Assessing whether the stated goals are smart can be a useful way to check the client's chances of success. Effective goals will generally fulfil all of the SMART criteria. This involves the goals being specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time-bound. When engaged with a client in creating a change plan, it's important to be conscious of the potential pitfalls that exist for practitioners. For example, should the client's ambivalence be underestimated, there's a danger that the practitioner may attempt to move too quickly and in doing so misunderstand the client and generate resistance. There can also be a tendency to assume that the principles and practices of motivational interviewing are for the initial stages of the discussion, and that these can be abandoned once the client shows willingness to change. To be clear, it remains crucial that the client sets the priorities, the pace and the process involved in their lifestyle change. Whilst practical advice may be offered if it's requested, practitioners should always avoid becoming too prescriptive at this or any other stage of the conversation. Similarly, however, practitioners do have a duty to tactfully indicate if the client's chosen course of action may be harmful to them. This may, for example, be necessary if a sedentary individual were to suggest that they start training by running five miles a day. Should this be the case, a practitioner might wish to acknowledge the encouraging commitment being shown and explore with the client some additional short-term options that they can be confident are safe and offer the best chance of avoiding injury. So this video is focused on the GROW model, particularly for the stages of the motivational interview once a client's readiness to change has been established. We hope that you found this exploration of some of the basic principles of behaviour change insightful and useful. If you'd like more training in motivational interviewing for brief consultations, please visit Health Diagnostics Learning Hub where a number of useful online tools are accessible. 
This is available at www.healthdiagnostics.co.uk. And all that's left to say is thank you for watching and good luck making your conversations with clients really count.